The People's Democratic Party, PDP, has accused your Progressive Congress, APC, of being responsible for the escalated tensions, violence, mass killings, kidnappings, terrorism and banditry devastating various parts of the country. In a statement issued by the National Publicity Secretary Kola Olobodino, the main opposition party said that since the APC assumed office in 2015, the nation has not known peace. Well, joining us to discuss this is Ogbona Nwuke. He's the APC spokesperson for River State and Emeka Mwadioke. He's a legal practitioner and also former spokesperson for the People's Democratic Party in River State, uh, Darlington Oji. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for joining us. Thank you, Thank you for having me. All right, I'm going to start with you, Darlington. Of course, the PDP seems to be heaping blames on the APC for all of the woes that Nigeria has been experiencing lately. In fact, um, in Mr. Olobodiyo's um, speech, he dated it back to 2015 when the APC came into power. He said that um, the country has not known peace from then. Um, really, why is the um, APC responsible for all of our problems all of a sudden? Well, thank you for the privilege to speak on these issues. For me, uh, when APC was coming in power in 2014, when they were campaigning, part of their campaign is that they are going to provide better security for the lives and properties of Nigerian people. They are going to make sure that Boko Haram will be hot. They are going to make sure that cheap tears will be released. They will make sure that we will return to one naira. And all these promises that are made to the people, and people key into their promises and voted them in. My dear sister, since then today, what we have seen is series of kidnapping, banditry, and all of that. And the defense, the ruling party, we always say, uh, it, it, it was worse during PDP regime. And if it is correct, you have preached change to people. And what are you doing about change? Change, by my understanding, is to do things anew. So for me, for the fact that Mr. President is not speaking hard, for the fact that the, our people are being killed on daily basis, and not former broadcast by the President of the Republic of Nigeria, who are taking an oath to protect the lives and properties of our people. What then do you expect us to say? Remember, in 2013, 2014, Mr. President was nominated by Boko Haram as one of their uh, negotiating uh, 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 personalities. And at the end of the day, what we are seeing is that, look at what is happening in the Southeast today. A lot of people are killed on daily basis and nothing is happening. So for me, if you are not in support of what is happening, what have you done to make sure that you survey the situation? But can you really, so the what can you, can of you really say is that... The ambiguous, it's known and it's in the public domain. That the APC has a lot of questions to answer. But can you really say that the APC under President Buhari has not really done anything to deal with the insecurity in the country? I mean, uh, there was uh, in Zamfara at some point, there was a no-fly zone that was declared. There was a shoot at site declared for the southeast. And of course, the president last week did say that he was going to deal squarely with the issue of banditry. And he said it again on um, uh, the day that they were celebrating Eid. So can you really say the government has not done anything? My dear sister, President Muhammad Buhari was elected by the people to address them and solve our problems. We did not elect his media aid, neither did we elect his uh, spokesperson. The point I'm making here is that what effort have you put in? Even in the president's work done in Castilla, in Duara in particular, this monarch was kidnapped and taken away for weeks. How can you say you are fighting banditry when you have declared IPOB terrorist group? And you cannot declare helpline terrorist group. You cannot declare it not that terrorist group or banditry that is ravaging Nigeria. You see, my worry is that people may decide to play politics. But if you watch the trend, how it is going to get to a point where everybody will shut in his door. So for me, the APC has not done anything. The president has need to hit hard and be proactive over issues and address Nigerian people that gave him authority to preside over us. You must convince us in what he's doing. All right, let me go to um, Obona Nwuke. He is the APC spokesperson um, for River State. Mr. Nwuke, can you hear me? 
All right, well, um, let me just go to Mr. Um, Barista Mekamwadioke. Barista Mekamwadioke, you obviously have, uh, I mean, everybody who lives in Nigeria is um, experiencing day by day, if it's not kidnapping, it's killings, it, if it's not that, it's one thing or the other. Uh, and one would wonder why all of these things are still happening and it's not uh, it's unabated. Of course, we know that as our police is overstretched, we have our soldiers also overstretched. They're dealing with the issue of Boko Haram in the northeast, banditry in the north uh, west and in the middle belts. I mean, I, I could spend all day, you know, calling the names of all of the different issues that we're dealing with uh, in terms of insecurity across the country. Um, but can we really solely live this at the foot of the APC? Thank you. I believe I can be heard. Yes. Okay. Now, basically, just like the last speaker said, uh, governance is about um, a mandate. If you're given a mandate, you know, you have to deliver. Um, I, I'm aware that the APC, you know, has over time said that it has probably done better than PDP in some areas, especially in containing uh, Boko Haram and uh, and all that but uh, recently it's been a very worrisome uh, situation to the extent that people you know almost everybody is saying declare a state of emergency on insecurity and um, all that so um we can't really it's, it's it's a difficult situation it's a difficult situation nigerians are not uh, do not feel safe and um, there's really no, no way to dice it. I, I'm aware that even in some places now, some people are leaving some areas just to go to maybe the FCT, just in search of uh, security. Is that bad? So um, really, the box stops on uh, Mr. President's uh, desk, and uh, um, it's not a good, uh, a good uh, situation thus far. As much as I understand you, because you're obviously speaking from a perspective of a citizen and it's not like you have a dog in this fight but um, when we talk about the fact that the box stops at the table of Mr. President there's also some um, people who have in fact even the presidency at some point has said that some politicians have are involved in the insecurity that the country is facing there are people who are stoking the fire let's not forget that aside from the insecurity there are ethnic tensions that are brewing it's become a regional thing and we have seen this issue more politicized than ever. Instead of us seeking solutions, it has become a theater for politicization. Why do you think that is? Uh, basically, that is, it's what it is. It's politics. So um, if um, the government is there to you know, secure lives and property, and um, it also goes uh, as far as uh, the issue of um, even dealing with um, the opposition, if they are found to be culpable in uh, fomenting trouble, you know, and all that. So, at the end of the day, it's not really about pointing fingers. Um, if, you know, opposition politicians are found to be culpable, bring them to justice. If it's criminals, bandits, kidnappers, or whatever you call them, bring them to justice. It's just as simple as that. So, um, yeah. Uh, you may not rule out the fact that, you know, especially in Nigeria, you know, you see a situation where some people may play pranks in, you know, trying to bring down um, or, or, you know, come to power through the back door, whether by fomenting trouble or not. But even recall that, even in that PDP statement, they actually said that um, even the APC brought in mercenaries, you know, to, uh, to gain power. So are they paying them in their own coin or, or whatever? We've seen uh, some videos unverified, you know, people claiming that uh, they had a deal and uh, uh, so and so reneged. So all these are, for me, um, basically conjectures. The, 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 my concern is that, you know, you have the mandate to secure lives and property. So however you do it, especially through intelligence, for instance, funding. Are they adequately funded? If they are not, why not? Now, if you have the adequate funds, so it doesn't really, it's not really an issue of uh, it's PDP, you know, trying to gain power through. Track them down, bring them to justice. If you have the evidence, 
and you know, it's not equally about maybe uh, trying to victimize. So hard evidence, hard facts. Um, invest the use the funds properly. Get get intelligence. Track these guys down and bring them to justice, whoever it is. Okay, um, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure if we have Obuna Muke here because we would love to get a response from the APC, but I think he's not joined us yet. So I'm going to go back to you, um, Mr. Oji. The, the PDP alleged that um, the, 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 the PDP had come into power with a ginger weed agenda uh, to foist a, f a reign of terror, balkanize, destabilize, and raise down the country for their selfish gains. Uh, and this is, this, this are very, very tough allegations. Um, is the PDP alleging that since the APC came into office, that this country has been turned upside down? I mean, at some point we had peace. This is something that has just, you know, become big in 20, since last year. It's not that since 2015, we've always had the issue of terrorism to deal with. But let's look at what happened yesterday. Um, Greenfield students were returned to their parents, thankful, even though they said uh, that they had to pay millions to get their children out, even though um, at some point uh, there were allegations uh, that, or in fact, the police had said that no money was being paid um, for the rescue of these students. But r just as those parents were jubilating that their children were home, Another set of students were taken in Niger State, and this is just a state that is just away from the FCT. I, I, I asked you earlier on, uh, and I think I asked Barista Mwadiuki, why is this issue of insecurity politicized? It's also, could the PDP be opportunistic at this point to be making these statements because they know that the country is facing some form of insecurity and this is an opportunity for them to shine? Um, why is the PDP not giving ideas on how to solve the level of insecurity that we're facing in the country? Now, let me tell you, in a working society, we would have been seeing people that are throwing the towel and taking a vow. Because when you make promises, governance is a social contract. When you make promises, you have to keep to the promises. If you cannot keep the, to the promises you made, it means you have failed. Now, let me give you an instance. In 2014, the, gover the today governor of, so uh, of uh, Kaduna State, Nasuru Aero 5, made a statement when the chief of guests were kidnapped and said, why can't government negotiate with bandits, Boko Haram, hoodlums, and release the children of Nigeria, no matter what is involved? In 2019, uh, 2018, now he's a governor, and he's saying, how can government go to negotiate with bandits? That is one. Two, if you watch the video of the release of those children yesterday, you will shed tears for Nigerian nation. We are parents who are saying that they contributed to the tune of 150 million naira. They have to sell all they have to make sure that they bring out their beloved ones. Has government not failed? Has government not given up? What does it take for government to give up? When you are, cannot longer guarantee the security of lives and properties of the people, then you throw in the towel. There is nothing like over what politicizing is, what is the, the What's the precedent? I'm sorry, no political I'm sorry Mr. Audrey. What's the precedent? Never have, has, has any Nigerian politician stepped down because he failed to do his job or because people have criticized him and asked him to that's step what, down. That, that's so, what I've told you. I, I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm going nation, somewhere. Just hold on. I'm going nation, somewhere. Mr. Audrey, Mr. Audrey, Mr. Audrey, Mr. Audrey I'm taking a bow. Can you hold what on? What's happening in this case? Hold on. Well, I'm, I'm going somewhere. Yeah, excuse me. Can you allow me to finish asking my question? Okay. The PDP ran this country for 16 years. Yes. Where, at what point did any governor who was not able to do his job or any politician under the flagship of the PDP step down because he was un unable to do his job or that the people were, uh, you know, dissatisfied? You guys didn't set the precedent, so why are you hoping that the PDP, the APC would do the same? If you draw my attention to a governor or a president of the PDP that didn't do well, then I'll have a statement to make. Have we said that? Said so you're, so you're telling me that, that we were all satisfied with former President no, Obasanjo, former President Goodluck Jonathan? Well, there are things that expected of you as a leader to provide for the people and not about complaints. There are things that are expected of you as a leader to provide for the people and not about complaints. See, under your watch, something will happen and you say it happened what? During PDP race. So what did you tell the people? You preach change to the people and change is making sure 
you leave the old way to you know to a better way today. And what okay. you are doing is suffering and suffering. You see, my sister, let me tell you. Nigeria, where we are today, whether we are playing politics with security or not, if we are not careful, it may consume. You know, when did nothing started? They started with the foreign, uh, white people and some people we are laughing. As I speak today, everybody has a kidnapping value. So for me, what is important is that government should rise to its responsibility and be proactive. Does it mean that our intelligence department is not working? Does it mean that the National Security Advisor is not working? We are, don't these people gather before they carry out this mayhem against the nation? Don't they gather? What is wrong with our intelligence gathering? Okay. I if think the government I... has not failed. So for me, APC has something to answer. They have skeleton in their cohort and they must respond to the cry of Nigeria by okay. providing quality security and to, you know, to secure the lives and property of our people. All right, Obuna Woke just joined us. He's the APC spokesperson for River State. Mr. Woke, uh, unfortunately, uh, I think you were having connection issues, so you joined us late. Uh, the PDP is alleging that all of the woes that the people of Nigeria, the Nigerian state is facing now in terms of insecurity, um, banditry, I mean, name it, uh, it's because of the APC. What's your response? Uh, let me thank you for uh, the invitation. And, and to say straight ahead that um, we are amazed that people who should know better, people who should appreciate the fact that uh, Nigeria is close to a state of war, are playing politics with uh, uh, security-related issues. Uh, I, I believe that uh, at a time like this, regardless of our political leaning, uh, this is the time when Nigerians of all persuasions must come together in order to fight uh, the common enemy. The common enemy here are those who are engaged in kidnapping, who are engaged in militancy, who are engaged in uh, insurgency. Now, the, it's not a time to push the blame game. It's a time to come together, find real solutions. Those who are causing trouble in Nigeria live in our midst. And we, we, let's also agree that regardless of what is going on, the, the Nigerian security system is yet to adapt completely to a guerrilla warfare uh, 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 pattern. Of crime. But before the situation now, got to the point where it is, Mr. Nwuke, the APC should have done something. Because I, I remember vividly when we started having these pockets of violence, the same calls that are being made today were made to the government of President Buhari uh, and to the APC-led uh, you know, administration that these issues look, should be dealt with. If these issues were nipped in the bud, would we, as, as you have said, be inching towards a war situation? But God forbid, nobody's advocating for that. No, now, the, the, the point I'm just trying to make here is that it took 16 years of uh, PDP rule to lay the foundation for insecurity. Of course, everyone knows. How do you mean, lay the, lay the foundation? You uh, listen, listen, the, the point, listen, if we don't find, lay down the foundation of what transpired in Nigeria, then we just got to find solutions. Now, in saying all of this, I'm not trying to, in any way, put the blame on the PDP, but I'm saying that things like Boko Haram took root under the leadership of PDP, and we need to study the situation, we need to, in order to tackle it, the army has been up in arms against terrorists. And now the operations of uh, terrorists are not as conventional. And so I also believe that the security agencies are trying to adapt to the realities on ground. Because you don't, you're not saying this is where the enemy lives. The enemy lives within you. But what we are saying, or what I'm saying, is that in order to defeat uh, 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 this kind of crime, we need to come together as a people under the leadership that's being offered at this time to, to find common grounds of action. This is the point. The, down, it is ridiculous that at a time like this, the, the PDP would spend more time playing politics. They, as long as we are concerned, it, it, might I, might I remind you, Mr. Mwuke, I just quickly, and I'm not in any way, I just want to play the devil's advocate here. Um, All right. It is on the same heels for, I mean, in fact, this issue of insecurity, it may not have been as bad as it was in 2014, but 
This is how the APC rose to power, by politicizing the issue of insecurity. And today, we have the APC in power. You played your position, interestingly, well, that got you here. Now the PDP is doing the same, and you're saying that they're politicizing it? Is this not a, a pot calling the kettle black situation? No, 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 no. The circumstances were different. In the beginning, the circumstances were very, very different. Now we, sat, we found ourselves in a system where the Boko Haram, for example, was gaining ground across the country, uh, particularly in the Northeast, and very little was done, even to check me. By the time the Buhari administration came in, and please remember that some local governments in the Northeast have been lost to the insurgents. But on a competitive basis, even though we still have pockets of, of uh, unrest, most of those uh, uh, grounds held by the uh, Boko Haram have been snatched from them. But perhaps going about it in a manner which suggests that we, we are begging the question is what I want us to avoid. Now, what is critical at this point in time? How to restore security to Nigeria, how to ensure that we live in peace. And all of us, whether you are politically aligned or non-politically aligned, this is a time for us all to come together to salvage this country. And I, and I think more than engaging in the blame game, this is what we need to do, act together. The, the security forces need intelligence. They need to be properly informed. Okay. Now, there is very little that they can do if those in whose localities these bad eggs are operating are doing very little to help in terms of uh, voluntary information. So I think we need to reorientate uh, our, our thinking okay. so that collectively we can defeat the common enemy. Well, I want to thank everybody because we're out of time. Darling Sinoji, former PDP spokesperson for River State. I want to thank Barisa Mekka Mwadioke for being part of the conversation. And, of course, um, Obunna Mwuke, APC spokesperson for River State, for being here. Thank you, gentlemen. We have to go. Thank you very much. All right. Well, thank, thank you, so you all for being here. Yeah. Thank you for staying with us, ladies and gentlemen. It has been an interesting show tonight. But I say goodbye. I'll see you tomorrow at 7 on Plus Politics. I am Mariana Kong.